everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial and today we are painting Aventus Firestrike, the Magister of Hammerhall. He's a really cool model that I've had in my pile of potential for a very long time and, well, I figured we would do him because, well, he's awesome and I wanted to get him done. <laughs> don't, even, don't know why I'm justifying it. So. Without further ado, we're going to jump right in and we're going to start painting him. Now, he has been primed in Wraithbone. And the place we're going to start is on the Toralon itself. I think it has a name. can't remember what it's called. But what we're going to do first is we are actually going to take some Pallid Witch Flesh. And we're going to add a dry brush over all of the Toralon's flesh. Now, what we want to do here with our medium dry brush is we want to start dry brushing this over the top of all those muscles in a circular motion, going clockwise, followed by anti-clockwise, just like this. And what this is going to do is just going to buff up those muscles to a nice, very pure, well, not quite pure, but a very bright white, just like that. I'm just going to keep going clockwise followed by anti-clockwise and this is just setting the scene for when we come to do our next coat just a nice soft dry brush and just a really soft way of bringing it up in quite a organic fashion. So with that dry brush now applied, what we're gonna do is gonna create a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part skeleton horde mix. And we're now gonna apply this all over the Toralon. So, well, all over his skin and his wings as well. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to load up this skeleton horde mix on our brush. And we're just going to start painting this all over. Just like this. Being careful I'm watching for pools. Cross our Toralon's flesh, we don't want that. What we're basically looking to do here with this really thin skeleton horde is effectively stain his skin this sort of bony colour. It's really soft, supple. Color, just like that. We just want to get this all over. As I said, do just be on the lookout for any large dark pools. Because it's so thin, you should be able to just wick it away with your brush. If you do see any, just keep that paint moving around. the excess. So with that done, you should now have an Aventus Fire Strike that looks somewhat like this. It's looking pretty cool. And what we've done here is we've basically established our top color across the entire of the model. It's nice and soft muscles, for example. But what we need to do now is we need to add those definition and the kind of shading to it. Now shading is very subtle here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part skeleton horde mix. And we're just gonna be using a slightly smaller brush for this. I'm gonna be using a small layer brush here. And basically what we wanna do is we wanna very, very softly, very carefully, just start 
running this into the recesses around all of the muscles. Just like this. Then what we can do is we can wash the brush. If you've got any hard lines like this one here, you can just pick up that line by just running a clean brush over it. Just like that, just to soften out that transition just a little bit. Like so. And you just want to go over all of the muscles. Don't worry about the wings. We're leaving those just for now. We're just going to be focusing on the muscles just for the moment. So with that done, you should have an Aventus fire strike that's starting to look somewhat like this, which is pretty cool. But we're just going to add a little bit more shadow into those deepest recesses in those muscles. And again, there aren't many of these. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some Agaros dunes. And now I'm using an Artis Opus size double zero for this because what I want to do is I want this to be very, very accurate. And what I want to do is on the deepest recesses, I want to paint some of this Agaros dunes, like that, going right down the middle of these muscles. You don't need a lot on your brush when you're doing this. I'm going to go back to the pot for small amounts each time, just like I'm doing here. And we don't even need to do it on, as I said, we don't need to do it on all of the recesses. You can just do, it's kind of like a spot shade in a way. <laughs> so for example, I've got a really good one right here on the back leg and then just above it underneath there we've got the knee as well like that whereas that bit down there on the calf we don't need to do because we want that to be quite a subtle shade just around here on the ankle and add a little bit same around here just like this so just go all over picking out the recesses that you want to pick out Don't worry too much about the tail either at this point, because that does fade out into the hair. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to create a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. And we're going to be using this to do all of our kind of darker hair, as well as a couple of extra blends. So. What we want to do is we're going to start here on the tail. And basically what we want to do is just get this all over the tail first. All over those long hairs. Like this. And then we want to bring it down the tail itself to around about there. We just want to make sure that we get the whole section. Then we want to wash the brush. And then we just want to smooth out that transition. Just 
just a little bit so we don't get a hard line. Like so. I'm just going to replicate that on the other side. All the way around. Turn about there. Like so. Wash the brush. And then just smooth it out. Like that. So you should have something that kind of starts to fade into a darker brown like that. Similarly, what we want to do on this hair here. You want to apply this all over the hair. Like so. In. We're just watching out for air bubbles here. Just trying to eradicate them like that. We're going to wash the brush. We've missed a bit just here actually. Apply that over that. Just make sure we get that. <laughs> then what we're going to do is we're just going to take that wildwood mix and then just over the kind of top of its flank, flank of its back, we're just going to add kind of like a brush width coming down like this. Widen that out just a little bit more. And then we're gonna wash the brush. And then we're gonna smooth it out. With a clean brush. Like that. And then similarly around here as well. Like that sort of thing. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, but we're going to have to do that just now. Because what we're going to do is we're also, over the top of the little hairs down here, on each of the legs, we're going to do the same thing. And I'm just going to smooth that out. And then on the top of the head as well. So with that done to all of our hair, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Seigel brown mix. And we're effectively going to do the same thing again, only with a much narrower version. So for example, here on the tail, what we're going to do is we're going to start painting this Seigel brown once again over the top of the tail hairs, like this. And we're going to come down to around about halfway of our halfway, so a quarter of the way. Wash the brush, and then we're just gonna once again, just smooth out that transition a little bit. Like so, so we get that fade up.
Just like that. Similarly, on the tail, on the back, I'm going to paint this all over the hair. Like that. And then, I'm going to paint a much narrower line going along it. And then we're just going to, with the clean brush once again, Like so, and then on all of our leg hair. And once again, just we're just going to now just aim to paint this over the hairs itself, and then we wash the brush. And just in case, yeah. this stippling motion just pick up any of that excess that's on the model itself. Just like this. So with that now done, the hair on his legs is where we want it to be, but the hair on the head the back and on the tail is not. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Saigal Brown on its own and we're going to apply this over the tail, but not the back and the head. So you just want to get this right on there, like this. Again, just making sure we get it all over the tail hairs first. And then we're just going to bring it down to around about there like that. We're going to wash that brush. I'm just going to once again just smooth out that transition just a little bit, like so. Same again on the other side. Wash the brush. So with that done, the tail is now finished. It's still wet at the minute, but that's okay. Because what we're going to do is we're just going to very quickly take some Ultramarine's blue. I'm going to paint this over the top of his horns because the horns are black and the remaining fur is black as well. Well, fur, hair. I'll get that right one day. We're going to put Ultramarine's blue over this because we want this to be a nice, hard, clean black. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some black Templar. I'm going to apply this all over the top of the head hair, the back hair, and the horns. So we're just going to do a little bit of model acrobatics here. We're just going to start applying this. So with that done, the black is still drying at the moment, but you should have a Toral on that looks somewhat like this. It's looking pretty cool, but what we're going to do, just before we do any highlights or any dry brushing or anything like that, 
what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly do the wings. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part saigo brown mix. And we're going to use this to add that kind of different colouring and this distinction that you can see on the model. Now, on the front, it's actually not very much of this at all. So really what we want to do is we want, with this saigo brown mix, don't want that much on our brush, what we want to do is across this kind of top section here, we want to start adding it along like this until we get to about halfway, around about there. And then we want to bring it down a level like that. And then we also want to just put it over the top of these little feathers just here going down to around about there and we of course want to make sure that we cover it all over these top sections just here like that then what we're going to do is going to wash the brush and just where this meets here, I'm just going to smooth it out onto the next line down. And similarly, I'm just going to smooth it out like so. Now on the back, what we want to do is it's basically all of this top line up until where these large feathers start. So up to <laughs> so start of kind of starting around here down to around about that one there like that. Then just following that line all the way through and across it. And uh, like that. I basically just want to replicate that across on the other side. Now, as we get down to a roundabout here, just like on the front, I'm going to start there. I'm just going to bring it out a little bit further. Like that. I'm going to wash the brush. I'm just going to smooth it out. Like so. And don't worry if it's a little bit rough because we are going to be adding more layers. We've also got some highlights to do. You just want to make sure that we get a nice coverage there around here. So that's Saigor Brown Contrast Medium Mix applied to both of our wings, like so. Just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to create a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part skeleton horde mix. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint this all over the top of these big feathers. And then on these smaller, well, bigger ones, we're going to actually do a little bit of blending. So with that skeleton horde mix, we're just going to start painting this all over like this. We can get it over the top of the Saigal Brown as well. It's not the end of the world if we do. So, I'm just going to get right under here and do these ones as well.
like that. So that's the first part. And then the big feathers, what we want to do is basically want to paint it to about halfway and then smooth out the transition. So on this big one up here, we get that skeleton horde on there till pick up those air bubbles again. Round about there, wash the brush, and then just smooth it out like so. So with that done, across both sets of, well, the inside and the outside of the wings, what we're now going to do is going to make a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and wildwood. And what we're going to do is we're just going to run this very carefully, again using our very small brush, and we'll just run this along the spines of the feathers. So with that done, you should have some wings that look somewhat like this. It's getting very close. So what we're going to do now, just in the last kind of part of darkening it down, is we're going to use some Saigor Brown. I'm going to be using this across that kind of very dark patch that you can see on the box art, which is just here across the front. So it is literally these large sort of feathery scales type things. So we're going to grab that Saigor Brown on our brush and then we're just gonna start painting it over the top of these areas. And we wanna make sure that we go all the way over. So we're just gonna start here. And we're just gonna very carefully paint this along. So with that done, just whilst we wait for that to dry, what we're now going to do is we're just going to quickly take some wildwood. We're going to paint this over the top of the hooves. So with that wild wood applied to the hooves, it's now time to add some highlights to all of these areas that we've just done. Now, the first one we're gonna do is wraith bone. And we're gonna dry brush this over all of the feathers. Well, not the kind of darker bits just around there, but we'll do this on the back because it's slightly easier to demonstrate. What we wanna do is we just wanna very lightly dry brush this wraith bone over the top of our wings. Just like this. So with that wraith bone dry brush applied, what we're then gonna do, is we're gonna take a dry brush of pallid witch flesh. We're gonna do this towards the ends. Again, this is a very gentle dry brush. We're gonna do this on the really big feathers. Like so. What we also want to do 
you want to dry brush this along the tail. Up to where it starts to fade into the brown. like that. And if you want to, if you're feeling brave, you can always add a very gentle circular dry brush motion around the muscles as well. But you want this to be very, very light, much lighter than when you originally did it. Just like this. But you don't have to. Entirely up to you at this point. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a dry brush of Scrag Brown. We're going to use this on our darker areas. So for example, just around here, Being very gentle here. Like that. I'm also going to do this across the hair. Both the black and the brown. Not those horns. Don't want those to have a brown tint. So with that done across all of those darker feathers and hair, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some pallid witch flesh and we're gonna use this to highlight the face. And this is going to be quite a wide highlight because we want it to be just as bright as the rest of the model. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Volupus Pink. I'm going to use this on the inside of the Torolon's mouth. Now this does go all the way up here. and all the way around the gums as well. So don't worry about avoiding the teeth or anything like that. So I make sure that you get this all over. And so with that done, we're then going to take some black Templar. I'm going to paint this over the top of the Toralon's eyes. We do just want to get a little bit of the kind of surrounding area as well. You we just want to kind of See this little groove just here? Get the Black Templar in there. Bring it round. And then kind of bring it out to a point. There, like that. And we'll do the same thing again on the other side as well. So 
So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some rust grey. I'm going to apply this to the eyeball of the Torolon. Like that. And then we're also going to use this to highlight the horns. So with that done, we're then going to take some Fenrisian grey. I'm going to use this as a little spot highlight on the sharpest point of our horns. So for example, just here towards the tip and then just around here at the crest of each of those ribs. Just coming all the way around like that. And with that Fenrisian grey applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some blue horror and just on the very tip here, we want to add a little bit like that. And on the eye, we're also going to add a little highlight going around the bottom right corner like that. And then on the left hand side, on the other side, we're going to go for the bottom left corner. So with that done, the eyes and the horns are now finished. So what we're going to do now is going to just work on that mouth and the colour we're going to be using first is Emperor's Children. We're just going to use this to add a little supple, subtle, not supple, highlight to the tongue and to the gums. And then with that done, we take some Fulgrim Pink. We add this as a little spot highlight. It's quite a narrow highlight there. And towards the tip of the tongue. Just around these gums as well. And so with that done, we're then gonna take some Screaming Skull. I'm gonna use this to paint in the teeth. So with that done, the face is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Karak stone. I'm going to apply this as a highlight for our hooves. What we're going to do on the hooves is we're going to paint lots and lots of little lines. Quite irregularly. Over the hoof. like so. You don't want loads on your brush as you do it. Because you don't want to disturb the consistency of the line. Start there from the edge highlight and then move it out like this. Like that. You basically want to take one pass from one side and then come back the other way. I'm not trying to go over it, but to just kind of add that even more consistent, you know, variation in the consistency. So we go. From the center out, and then just head back over it once again, like that. 
So with that carrack stone applied, what we then do is we take some screaming skull and just towards the front of the hoof or hoof, we just do the same thing again, but just like that much, not too much of the horn, but horn, hoof. Like that, just towards the front. So with that done, our Torolon is now finished and he looks awesome. But we are of course not done there. We are now gonna work on all of, well, the Torolon's armor, but this is now also an opportunity to start working on a Ventus Fire Strike himself. So with that in mind, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with all of the black details. <laughs> and the color we're gonna be using for this is Black Templar. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna load up our brush and we're just gonna start painting it. So we've got areas like the Peturges just here, down the front of the Torolon. We've got all the straps around the Torolon. And we've also got the soft details and the scabbard on Aventus Firestrike himself. So there, the scabbard is just in here. So we've got the sort of leathery part of it. Just there in the middle. Not a huge detail, but it's good to get it done now. And then as I said, we've got the soft details on Aventus. So for example, under his armpit, behind his knees, and his belt. So with that done, we've also painted in the saddle with the Black Templar as well. Just get it just in there. But what we're gonna do just before we kind of do what I think you're all thinking should be next is the gold. Uh, we are actually just gonna paint in the red details. Now, the red details that we're gonna be focusing on are the kind of saddle cloth, which is just here. And also we're just gonna do the red on his plume as well, just whilst we've got it here open and now. So, the colour we're going to be using for this is Blood Angels Red, and we're just going to start whacking this on there. Now, we don't need to worry about the design that's on it for now. Just because we can correct that later. It's just much simpler and easier to get a nice, smooth, and effective coat of Blood Angels Red over it now. So with that Blood Angels red applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna work on all the blue parts. Now this is gonna include the little bit of armor here at the front of the Torolon. It's gonna to include his right shoulder pad or our left shoulder pad, the outside of both of his cloaks as well, and the reins. Now the color we're gonna be using first is Talisar blue. And this is basically acting as our pre-shade because we want this to be a nice, rich, bright blue but we don't want it to be as bright and shiny as the Talisar Blue is. And 
And again, we're not worrying too much about those extra details because we are going to neaten them up before we do them. And now we just want to concentrate on getting this done. So with that Talisar blue applied to all of those details, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Ultramarines blue. I'm going to paint that over the top of the Talisar blue. So with that Ultramarine's blue applied to all of our blue details, he's starting to really come together. Now it's still wet, but don't worry, because we are going to move on to a different colour, and that is going to be finally Retributor Armour. Now we're going to be using this, this is gold all over all of our gold details. So there's tons of them because, well, Avent Aventus Firestrike is of the Hammers of Sigma. So you know what that means, gold armour everywhere. So you just want to start picking out all of these details with the Retributor Armour. And just work your way methodically across the model. So I'm starting from the leg up to the chest and the neck and then on to Aventus himself. But do check out the box art. To make sure you get it all. And once that's done, we'll come back. So with that done, as you can see, there is a lot of gold all around the miniature, but it's all done now. So what we're gonna do is move on and we're gonna take some thin down lead belcher and we'll use this to paint in all of our silver details. And this is gonna include areas like this kind of little anvil shape just here on the staff. Just there, like that. We want to do that front and back, of course. We've got a similar one just here on the chest. We've got the little chain links just here on the reins, the little belt buckle just here, we've got the stirrups, and basically any other areas that you want to be silver. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Volupus Pink. I'm going to paint this over the soft weapon grips on the staff and on his sword. And so with that Volupus Pink applied, we then take some Skeleton Horde. I'm going to paint this over the paper on the front. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to add some shades to the model. Now there's a number of details that we haven't done yet, such as the bauble at the top here and the lightning there. And there's some lightning here on the chest and on the belt and at the front here and the cape and all of this stuff. <laughs> That's all going to be white. But the reason we're just going to do some shades now is because a lot of this white, these white details are kind of 
in and around areas that it's very easy to get the shades on top of, so we just have to correct it anyway. So we're gonna do the shades first, and then we're gonna do them wide. So the color we're gonna be making is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and fire slayer flesh. And we're gonna be using this over the top of all our gold details. Now the contrast medium is really just in there to improve the flow and keep the paint wetter for longer. That way it's a little bit easier to move it around should you get any large dark pools. As ultimately what we are aiming for is for this fire slayer flesh to give us that warmth on the gold, but actually mostly stay in the recesses. Now if you do get any large dark pools, don't worry too much. We are going to be doing a relayer of gold a little bit later on. For those of you who've seen my Hammers of Sigma videos before, you'll know what I'm talking about. But for now, we're just going to get this fire slayer flesh all over these gold details. And then once that's done, we'll come back. So with that done, you should have some beautifully shaded gold, just like this. But what we're going to do now, very quickly, is we're just going to take some Griff Charger Grey. I'm going to use this to shade all of our silver. So with that now done, all that's left to do in terms of this base coating stage is to fill in all of the white details. Now, the color we're gonna be using is Corax White and we're just gonna be getting this all over all of our details that we want to be white. So for example, on all of our kind of interior cloth, we're just gonna start painting this Corax White all over, just like this. Now, I know we haven't done any contrast paint to it just yet, Trust me. Things will go a lot smoother this way. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Apothecary White. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of our white details, except the ball at the top of the staff. We don't need to do it on that. But over the top of this design on the cloak and on the saddle blanket and over all the little various bits of lightning, we absolutely do want to do this. So we're going to just take that Apothecary White and just paint it over the top, just like that. Nice and simple. Now, when it comes to the inside of the cloak, what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna take a little bit of contrast medium and throw it in there, like a one-to-one. -one. So with that apothecary white applied, our Aventus Fire Strike is now at what I would call pretty much a war hipster battle ready. But of course, he isn't. There's, he's come a lot further than that. However, what we're going to do now is we're going to take him that next stage further. Because all of his base coats and all of his shades are on. Anything we haven't done yet is the top of that bauble, but that's something that we will do right at the end. Now, the place we're going to start in our taking him to the next level stage is with all of the gold. And the color we're gonna be using first is Retributor Armor. We're gonna be using this to effectively re-brighten and re-layer all of our flat panels. So we get them nice and shiny. So we're just gonna get this Retributor Armor over the top of where we've shaded it, just avoiding any of the recesses 
just like I'm doing here. Now you don't have to do this on all of the panels, because some of them are very small and very fiddly. And we are going to be doing a highlight in just a moment. So we don't need to do this over those because they'll, they'll give us that really deep contrasting shadow that we want. Over the big ones, we absolutely do want to do this, like I'm doing here on this leg. So with that Retributor Armour reapplied to all of our gold details where we want it. So for example, down there on the legs and on those wild legs here, there and everywhere. What we're now going to do is we're going to add a highlight. Now the colour we're going to make is a roughly two part Stormhost Silver to one part Retributor Armour. We're going to use this on all of our edges. This is going to make it look nice and bright and shiny. And all the light is now going to ping off it. Just like this. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Stormhost Silver. We're going to use this to highlight all of our silver details. But we're also going to use this to add a little spot highlight to the gold. So firstly on the silver details, for example, just down here. I'm just going to pick out those edges. Like that. I'm also going to pick out the gem. I'm going to pick out the little studs. Like that. And then on the gold, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of, as I say, a little spot highlight. So for example, just there on that section, we just want to add the Stormo Silver around there like that. Whereas on here, we just want to add it on the corner. Just like this. So we're going to go around like this with the Stormhose Silver. And then once that's done, we're going to come back. So with that done, all of our metallics are now finished. And they look pretty awesome, as you can see. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on. And we're going to start highlighting all of that blue. Now the colour we're going to be using first is Howeth Blue. And we're just going to be picking out all of the edges on all of our blue details. That Hoeth blue applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Fenrisian grey. We're going to add this as our little spot highlight to all of our blue details. Like that to the tip of that arm piece. And similarly, on areas such as the cloak. Now this is quite a narrow highlight going across the bits that we want to really catch the light. So with that done, all of our blue is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Dawnstone. I'm going to use this 
to highlight all those black details. So with that Dawnstone applied, we're then gonna move on to the red details and the color we're gonna use is Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm just gonna use this as I said. Oh no, I haven't said that. What I mean to say is, we're just gonna highlight all the edges. And so, with that Evil Sun Scarlet applied, we then take some Fire Dragon Bright. We apply this just towards the ends of the sharpest points. A little too much there. So with that done, we've just got a couple of things left to do, including the white and the shiny bits, like the gems and things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the white first, and we are gonna be once again using Corax White, and on the small details, such as this area, at the front here, you just wanna use Corax White as a edge height. much paint. So with that done, all of our white is now looking spick and span, brand new and awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to very quickly take some ethermatic blue. I'm going to paint this over the ball on the top. So with that done, it's finished, it looks awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna very quickly take some Blood Angels Red, I'm gonna paint this over these two large gems just here on the front. And so with that done, what we then do is take some Fire Dragon Bright and we run this as a highlight around the bottom half of both of our gems. And then to finish off both of those gems, we then take a tiny dot of Corax White. I'm just gonna add that at the top. Effectively opposite where we've added our Fire Dragon Bright, just like that. And with that done, there's just one more thing to do, which I forgot to mention, is to take a tiny amount of Achillean Green and over the top of this little phylactery here, I'm just gonna paint this. It was originally painted with silver and then highlighted with Stormhouse Silver. So 
So with that done, Aventus Firestrike, the Magister of Hammer Hall, is now finished. Doesn't he look a treat? But there's just one last thing to do, and that is the base. It's actually very, very simple to do. What we're going to do is we're going to use Griff Charger Grey. I'm going to paint this all over the top of all of this stonework. So we're just going to start painting it all over. Just like this. Using these nice big broad brush strokes to get a lovely smooth finish. And if you want to, because it's quite a large surface area, you could use the palette to control how much paint you've got on your brush. You can even add just a little bit of contrast medium if you want to to help control the flow a little bit better. I'm just using a little palette here, so make sure I've got a handle on how much is coming out of my brush. And so with that done, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some Militarum Green I'm going to use this to pick out all of our petals or leaves. And so with that done, all that remains is to give it a very gentle dry brush of deep kin flesh. All over the stone and the leaves. And then of course, you can finish off the base in the same style as the rest of your army. And so with his base complete, Aventus Firestrike, the Magister of Hammer Hall is now finished. The mightiest of Sigmar's wizards also, it is led to believe he is absolutely awesome. Fantastic model, really dynamic and awesome. I really love the Toralon. I know he's not popular, but I really like it. And <laughs> it's a really fun challenge to do. That soft skin across the body of the beast is really, really awesome and really, really fun to get done. Actually, reasonably simple. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.